today's Bible study comes from the book of Philippians, the first chapter, and we are studying verses 7 through 11, and it reads as follows. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Paul is still in his prayer. And as he's speaking to him, he says, hey, I have a reason and a right to feel this way. It is right for me to feel this way because you've been good to me. And that's why I'm praying for you. This was one of my ways to give back to those who gave to me. And you were with me. And my trials and my situations with the gospel and spreading it. And he said that they are partakers with me of grace. So that means the same grace that Paul received, it was being given to them also. And he says, I have you in my heart. You know, Paul had, Paul, Paul was, Paul loved people. He had a great heart. And this was a church he started, he first started, and the Philippian people, they were in his heart. And he says, I could go, God is my own to tell you about this. My, my affection towards you. See, he had affection towards you. He says, how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. So he had affection for them. Then he says, this I pray, uh-oh, that your love may abound still more and more. So when he says that, he says, this I pray that your love. First of all, the Philippians had to have love. And from the sounds and the way it reads, they must have had Bunches of love. And Paul knew it because he said they showed it to him. And he says, that your love, something that you showed to me that I saw, may not only stop here, but it may it abounds still more and more. So he's saying, may it continue to grow. May it jump out to others. Um, even if we have much, you still need more love. We all do. We all need more love. That your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment. And, and Paul is saying, hey, this love that I'm talking about also, that I want to be in abounds in you, don't let it be love that uh, distracts you or blinds you. Um, he, and he says it there, he says, knowledge and all discernment. See, he was saying, this love that you get, it would be a good love that can see things and approve things and approve good things. That you may be sincere and without offense. So when you get these excellent things, these good things, be sincere, be sincere, be sincere, be sincere. And he says, and without offense. So have it together in you. You know, these things are inner and outer. We should be right, okay? Till the day of Christ. And he's saying, once again, be evident and know that Jesus Christ is coming. But that these things will become even more evident 
in your life until Jesus Christ comes. So they'll grow even more so until Jesus Christ. You'll be able to discern. You'll be able to have this knowledge. You'll know about the righteousness, the faith, and all these things. May they grow till the day of Christ. Being sincere. And he said, hey, I see becoming sincere, but there's more to just being sincere. Okay? You got to repent. You got to give up. That's without offense part. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness. Woo, man. See, there's a work that goes with the sincere and without offense. But it ain't you. It's God's work within us. And don't forget, there are fruits of righteousness. And we're filled with the fruits of righteousness. Okay? So, as Paul is explaining this, he's letting them know, filled with the fruit of righteousness, and this fruit of righteousness comes from and through Jesus Christ, and why to the glory of and praise of God. It tells you that in verse 15, or verse 11, I'm sorry. Filled with the fruit of righteousness. So there is righteousness. If you look back, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless. That's internal and external righteousness. And filled with the fruit of righteousness. Righteousness is a fruit. And this fruit comes through Jesus Christ. And the reason that it comes through Jesus Christ is to the glory and praise of God, which all things that come through Jesus Christ are to the glory and praise of God, as Jesus himself was the glory of the Lord and the praise of God. Amen.